I'm Bryce Tomlinson from AHeartToWitness.com, and this is Mind Power. Two years ago, I did a video called How to Repair Windows Movie Maker 2.1. Two years has passed and technology has changed drastically and this video is desperately in need of some updates so that's what I'm doing today. At this point in time I don't have Windows Vista and I don't have Windows 7. I don't plan on ever upgrading to those operating systems so this information is strictly about Windows XP and you can follow those instructions at your own risk. However I have heard from some Windows Vista users that say that this uh, approach does work to fix Windows Movie Maker on Vista. I can verify that. So again, proceed at your own risk. Um, the main problem I was encountering back then was random crashes and Windows Movie Maker uh, not being able to save my videos as video files like Windows Media video files. So um, this video has uh, several simple fixes for a number of problems. The first one is um, the first thing you should do in the side of this video, in the description, you'll find a link to Windows Service Pack 3. So I would urge you right now, if you're having problems with Windows Movie Maker, download Service Pack 3 and install it from that link. It'll be an installable package that will, uh, in essence, reinstall Windows Service Pack 3. Even if you have Service Pack 3, but especially if you have Service Pack 2 or 1 or don't have a Service Pack installed in Windows XP, make sure you install Service Pack 3 right over the top of whatever you have. It should fix numbers of problems with Movie Maker and um, also other things. Uh, secondly, there's also codec issues that you might have with your video. And here's how to fix your codecs. We're gonna start out right here you can see I've got my uh, uh, speaker, my volume control over here in the corner, and you can go adjust audio properties. You can get to it from this screen, or you can also go to your start menu under settings. I don't know if your control panel will expand like mine, but um, this is this is mine here. So you can go here to sounds and audio devices. You get to the same panel. Okay, I'm gonna throw you, show you the different ways to get to this, and then I will get right to the uh, to the gist of it. You can right click on control panel and click open. Um, or if your control panel doesn't expand like mine does, then you can get to this. Um, from here, you go sounds, speed, and audio devices, sounds and audio devices, right? So you, of course, got to it that way. You can go back, switch your, uh, if you are like me and you normally have your control panel in classic view, then from here, you just scroll down and search for the one that says sounds and audio devices. And of course, now we are to the sounds and audio devices uh, dialog, and you want to go to hardware. And from here, you'll see all your different devices. I've got a ton of them. And down here, you'll see video codecs. Click on properties. And then again, you'll see the properties tab. What you want to do is go through and click remove. And just click, 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 click on remove until all of these are removed. I know that sounds really drastic and horrible, but uh, you'll find that the solution to this is right around the corner. Okay. I'm not going to actually do that on mine because I've already gone through the process a couple of times. But, uh, the next thing you do, after you're all done with that, you close up all this other junk. You're going to go to http colon forward slash forward slash www.aheart2witness.com. And from here, you will click on software, which you see right up here in the top. Once you're to the software page, go down and you will see video. Click on video and it will take you to the video software links down here. This is all free stuff. So you scroll down and you'll get to where it says K-Lite Codec Pack. Click on that and it will take you to where you can download the K-Lite Codec Pack. I'm going to assume that you have the ability within your grasp to download and install something, so I'm going to let you download and install K-Lite Codec Pack on your own. You're going to want to go into the links in the description for this video. You'll find there's a link to download uh, Windows Media Player 11. Now I know there's some of you that don't like Media Player 11. I frankly don't like it because it just crashes all the time. I don't know why it crashes all the time. But uh, Media Player 11 just kind of sinks. So uh, I'm much better off with Media Player 10. However, Media Player 11 has better codecs. And if you install Media Player 11, it will fix a lot of the problems with your codecs with uh, Movie Maker. And I'm more concerned about uh, Movie Maker working than I am about Media Player 11, since how 
Honestly, if you were serious about playing video on your computer, you'd use something like Media Player Classic or some better program other than Media Player. I use Winamp for audio and I use a Media Player Classic for video, so Media Player 11 is simply there for the purpose of catering to the Microsoft big machine. Um, but here we, uh, here we have an actual use where uh, installing Media Player 11 serves some actual purpose in the world, and that is to fix the codecs on your machine that have gotten screwed up through various ways. Um, so you just click on the link that's in the description for this video and it'll take you right to the Media Player 11 site and you can download whatever version pertains to your version of Windows. Um, <coughs> hopefully you've already got Windows XP Service Pack 3 so you've got the new 2.1 version of Movie Maker already but uh, Media Player 11 will fix a lot of your codecs. Now I got that idea from Betaflex but I took it to a new level by essentially telling you to remove every codec from your machine and then you're going to install the K-Lite codec pack and then you're going to install Media Player 11 and once you do that, once you restart your machine after that you're going to find that uh, media, that uh, Movie Maker will work a whole lot better. And then thirdly, there's a number of problems that uh, could cause your Windows Movie Maker to crash when you first boot it up. And so uh, here's the fix that I came up with for fixing Movie Maker when it first boots up. You go into your start menu, click on run, type in reg edit, and it will pull up the registry editor. You can maximize that if you want to. You go into uh, H key current user, which is right here. You go down here to software, and you scroll way down here to where Microsoft is, and you scroll way down here to where you see MM20. And in some cases, your Movie Maker might be a more updated Movie Maker, but mine is MM20, even though my Movie Maker is uh, version 2.1. You click on that plus sign to open that up, and right down here you will see recent document list. Click on that, and up here you'll see document one. You might see more documents with uh, with mine before I experimented with this. There was four of these, but it says document one and then document count. Just uh, delete everything that's in here. Just click on the first thing, document one in this case. Delete it. Are you sure you want to delete this value? Yes. Go up here to document count. Click on that. Hit the delete button, and then you sure you want to delete this? Now I'm using the delete key to delete these. Just hit the delete key, and and then that should do it. You just uh, go up here and close up the reg edit, and then the next time you go to uh, load up Movie Maker. See, it loads it up with no document loaded in here, and um, that should fix it. Most of the time, when Movie Maker crashes when it's booting up, it's because it's trying to load a document, the last document that was loaded into it, and then usually it's corrupt. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline exactly how to change the settings on Movie Maker so that you can rely on it a little more. There's going to be probably several professionals who will respond and say this is idiotic. It's going to make Movie Maker not work. Hello, if you're checking this out, Movie Maker already doesn't work for you, right? Okay, so what are you going to lose? Up at the very top, you'll see the menu. Go to Tools. Go all the way to the bottom of the Tools menu, where you see Options. Down here, you'll see three tabs, General, Advanced, and Compatibility. The one that you're looking for is Compatibility. Now, if you look at Compatibility, you're going to see a whole bunch of filters, and most of them, they'll all be checked. What I'm going to show you here is something totally unorthodox. People will tell you this is crazy and it can't work, okay? But if you're like me, Movie Maker is already crashing on you all the time, right? And it's completely unreliable. So. Why not try this as an experiment? Hey, what can you lose? Uncheck every last one of those filters that you see up here. You see this long list of filters? Just go down the list and uncheck every one of them. There you go. Now, you should have it all clear. Click OK. My name is Bryce Tomlinson from aheart2witness.com. You can check out my website. It has plenty of family-safe material there, music, photos, countless other things. All right? God bless you. Bye-bye.